And Myanmar is heading to the polls in just over three weeks. State councillor Aung San Suu Kyi is expected to win the re-election in the country's fourth general election. For a deeper look at this, Amo Thuzar joins us for more. Ms. Thuzar is a fellow and co-coordinator co -coordinator of the Myanmar Studies Programme at the IC's Yusuf Ishak Institute. Amo, thanks for joining us. So firstly, Aung San Suu Kyi's term in office has been saddled with challenges like the Rohingya crisis. Many say she failed to fulfill her past election promises. Do you think a landslide victory for the ruling National League for Democracy led by Ms. Suu Kyi will be uh, likely or unlikely? Uh, good evening, Steve Blender. Yes, um, if you look at the election manifesto of the ruling National League for Democracy, the continuation of some of the promises that were highlighted as priorities from 2015 actually shows the, the uphill nature of uh, some of these large uh, transition priorities that um, Dawn San Suu Kyi and her party has uh, set for themselves. Um, you talked about a landslide victory uh, for the ruling party uh, being either likely or unlikely. I would say that um, indications uh, are such that uh, uh, it would not be in, 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 in the same number of volume as the win in 2015. Although uh, there are wide expectations that the, um, the ruling party will still be able to uh, win a majority to be able to form a government. Uh, my math is not that great, but just to give you an indication of how that is, because there are 25% of um, military appointed members of parliament in the current uh, parliament set up in Myanmar, this means that any party that wants to form a government would need to win about, I guess, 67% of the remaining seats in parliament in order to get that 50% majority that will enable them to uh, propose presidential candidates. Mm -hmm. Mo, one recent survey showed that the public's trust in uh, Ms. Aung San Suu Kyi increased since last year. How much of it do you think is her direct role in managing COVID-19? Do you think she effectively turned this crisis to her advantage? Linda, I think we're looking at the same poll uh, when we're looking at these numbers, right? Um, I, I think the, there was no follow-up question in that poll on, you know, what is the reason for that increase uh, or, or the continued trust uh, in the state councillor, although the percentage of that trust uh, figures uh, continue to be high. Um, so there is every possible interpretation, but um, the fact that uh, the state councillor actually got onto Facebook around the time of when uh, COVID-19 was spiking um, in the first wave around the world uh, speaks much to, uh, to I think, uh, her awareness that uh, this would be an effective communication tool uh, to get the messaging directly to the people in the context of the pandemic. And so uh, there is that likelihood that um, her, her sudden greater accessibility, shall we say, via social media um, and the engagement uh, with different stakeholders in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic again, over this uh, mechanism uh, of Facebook, uh, seems to have uh, added to uh, people's perceptions that uh, uh, at least she's uh, so-called listening. Mo, confidence among ethnic states in Aung San Suu Kyi, uh, we understand, has waned since uh, 2015. Is this significant at all in regards to this election? Uh, Steve, I think so. Uh, because the very high expectations that um, with uh, the National League for Democracy uh, coming in as, as the, uh, the ruling party after the 2015 elections, the expectations uh, nationwide uh, were to vote in the NLD for change and, of course, uh, to look forward to the kind of change that the NLD would bring. Uh, but I think the mismatch between those expectations and realities has been greater in uh, the, the ethnic regions. And uh, this adds to long-held perceptions that uh, the NLD is, uh, after all, uh, a Burman-centric uh, type of party. So uh, there, there are all these um, 
I think perceptions and attitudes that have been growing. Uh, added to the fact uh, is that uh, in Myanmar, the ruling party, the government appoints uh, chief ministers for all the regions and states. Uh, so whoever the government appoints then becomes the arbiter of uh, um, administrative and governance uh, matters in these ethnic states. And that's been an added factor as well. And, and so I think uh, there is this very real need to really go and engage in confidence and trust building uh, among the ethnic groups uh, beyond what is being uh, done uh, at the uh, discussion table for the nationwide ceasefire process. Thank you so much, Mo, for speaking to us and for your analysis. There, we've been speaking with Muthaza, fellow and coordinator of the Myanmar Studies Program at the ICS Yusuf Ishak Institute.